If you're writing a TV pilot script and you need some guidance, you've come to the right place. Hi, I'm Micah Craddy. I'm a WGA screenwriter and the head of writing at Arc Studio. In this course, I'm going to walk you through the process of writing a TV pilot. These lessons aren't going to provide a formula for writing a TV pilot because formulas don't work. Instead, I want to help you understand the underlying story and character mechanics in television pilots so you can create something compelling and original. In this first lesson, we'll dive deep into what you need to know to develop a strong idea for a TV show. Then in future lessons, we'll cover creating compelling characters, writing scenes of dialogue, story structure, revisions, and more. Stick around to the end of the video for some resources to help you, and hit subscribe and turn notifications on so you don't miss out on future lessons. Now, come join me on this journey of knowledge, brought to you by Arc Studio screenwriting software and your imagination. How do you come up with a great idea for a TV show? Well, it has to be a great story, that's the bare minimum, but it also has to be the kind of story that works in TV and not movies, because TV shows go on for multiple episodes and hopefully for multiple seasons. And all those episodes need stories. So instead of telling one great story, your TV show needs to be capable of generating dozens of stories. That's the secret sauce for television. Let's take a look at how that's done. The first ingredient in the recipe for a great TV show idea is conflict. No, not necessarily that kind of conflict. Conflict doesn't always mean violence. Yes, this is conflict. But so is this. No, you know what? Congratulations to you, Skyler. Great job! Mm -hmm. I mean, what is this? What, what do I have to do? I'm trying to talk to you and you just okay, sit- don't talk, Walt! And this is conflict, too. The loon the day Robert Palin's murdered me. It was also the night that the skeletons came to life. Conflict doesn't have to be loud or bloody. Conflict just means that your characters want something, but there are obstacles in their way keeping them from getting it. In real life, conflict sucks. But in storytelling, conflict is essential. Because conflict is where stories come from. The kind of conflict you need for a TV show is a chronic conflict, or an unresolvable conflict. It's the kind of problem that doesn't just get solved once and is done. It keeps going. For instance, in the TV show The West Wing, the main characters are all idealists who want to make the world a better place. But they live in the real world, and even worse, they operate in the murky world of politics. And they have to keep compromising their ideals in order to get things done. And that doesn't just happen once, it happens over and over. Every time they want to do something in every episode, they're faced with these dilemmas. That's a chronic conflict. Clear to me Leon. that the only way to stop their continued aggression. Damn it, Leon, would you shut up already? Let's tie this into your idea for a TV show. What's the chronic conflict at the heart of your idea? What's the unresolvable conflict that's going to keep causing problems episode after episode, season after season? As a hint, the chronic conflict in TV shows often come from the protagonists, or main characters. What they want just doesn't fit in with the world they live in. For instance, in The Simpsons, Homer Simpson just wants to eat donuts and drink beer and watch TV. But he's a husband and a father and has to support his family. Those two things are in conflict and they're going to be causing problems for, you know, decades. So what is it about your main character or characters that's going to keep causing conflicts for episode after episode, season after season? If the chronic conflict is still feeling a little too abstract, let's look at this a different way through story engines. Story engines are the aspects of your TV show that are going to keep generating fresh stories. The most obvious examples of story engines are on procedurals, or case of the week shows. These are the cop, legal, and medical dramas where, you know, they solve a new case every week. The story engine is pretty obvious. It's whatever the case is. Every episode is a new case and you can just keep coming up with a new case, which means you can come up with another episode. This is why Law & Order has been going on for over 20 years. Sitcoms are the comedy version of a procedural. You usually have a simple story engine, often based around the flaws or problems of the main character, and this keeps generating new problems and new stories, which means new episodes. Holy mother shirtballs. 
Now, some shows are pure procedurals, like Law & Order, where it's just the case of the week. Some are hybrids, like Suits, where you have some sort of case of the week and also ongoing stories. And then a lot of shows are serialized, where you don't have a case of the week. It's just one ongoing story. And the story engines for those serialized shows might not be as obvious, but they're there. To see how you can create a story engine for those kind of shows, let's actually look at a hybrid, Suits. Now, Suits does have a case of the week aspect where there's some new legal issue that they're trying to solve by being just brilliant. Um, but they also have ongoing stories. For instance, one of the main lawyers on the show, Mike Ross, isn't a real lawyer. He's a fake lawyer. He didn't go to law school. And he is at constant risk of being discovered. So that keeps creating new problems for him to solve, which keeps creating new episodes. Lewis knows. Lewis knows what? My dirty little secret. You're Canadian? Ha ha ha, no, he knows that I didn't go to Harvard. Then you have another story engine that's the power dynamics of the firm. They're always jockeying for position, someone's trying to stage a coup or do a hostile takeover, and you just keep getting new problems and new stories. And of course, you have the relational story engines, the romantic and friendship dramas. Uh, will they or won't they, getting back together, breaking up, uh, revenge, backstabbing, all those things keep creating new stories which create more episodes. So you can see that the story engines come from how you construct the show, the world they're in, the problems they're facing, and who the characters are. So think about your idea. What are the story engines? What's going to be creating new stories every episode? It helps to look at your characters. What do they want and what's stopping them from getting it? If those situations keep happening over and over again, it means you're going to get more episodes. Now we've been talking a lot about conflicts. But how do you know if the audience is going to find those conflicts interesting? It's time to talk about steaks. Got the garlic and sort of brush. Not those kind of steaks. We're talking about dramatic steaks in your script. Although, hold on a second. Imagine you are watching a show where chefs are cooking literal steaks. It's one of those cooking competition shows. Uh, they all have to create the same dish, and for the episode, you're watching them struggle, they don't have that much time, uh, they have limited ingredients, and they're running around, dropping things, burning things, undercooking things, all sorts of drama. Oh, fuck. But they finish their dishes, they put them in front of the judges, you know, the judges look at them, taste them, all of them, and uh, <laughs> look at the contestants and say, this is the best steak, this is the worst steak, um... But it doesn't matter. No one wins. Nobody goes home. We'll see you all next week. If you were watching that show, you'd probably be asking yourself, what did I just see? What was the point of all this? There were no consequences. The winner didn't win anything. The loser didn't lose anything. It was all meaningless. It was missing something. Well, what it was missing was stakes. Stakes are what your character has to gain if they reach their goal and what they have to lose if they fail to reach their goal. One of the great things about stakes is that they keep your story moving, because once your protagonist is on their journey towards their goal, they can't stop the interesting things you have them doing and go back to their boring old life. Because if they go back to their boring old life, they fail in achieving their goal. And because of stakes, if they fail in achieving their goal, they lose something. But if there are no stakes, then they can just stop whenever they want and your story doesn't need to exist. Stakes are also super important because they make your story more meaningful and they make the audience more invested. The audience is more invested because the characters have something to lose. So the more the characters have to lose, and the more the characters care about whatever it is they have to lose, the more invested the audience will be. Having something important to lose doesn't mean that every story has to be about the end of the world or the character dying or their family being in danger. It just means that that character really has to care about whatever it is they have to lose. So make it specific to that character. It could be something about their family, something relational, it could be something material in the world, or it could be something internal, something emotional or psychological. It's just something that that specific character really can't stand to lose. And on the flip side, you make it something they really have to want to gain. It's really important to them. So think about your story. What does your character have to gain if they succeed in reaching their goal? And what do they have to lose if they fail? Can you push it further? Can you make the reward bigger or the price of failure even more costly? The more you do, the more powerful your story may be. Theme can feel really intimidating because it's so big and all-encompassing that you don't even know where to start. So, like, maybe just don't even think about it. 
But theme is really important, and wrestling with it is really important because it'll help make your show resonate more with your audiences on an emotional level. If you don't have a strong theme, your show is at risk of feeling hollow and forgettable. So what is theme? Theme is just what your show is really about underneath the surface. But let's break that down into two questions that are a little more practical. One, how do you come up with your theme? And two, how do you put your theme in your show? First, how do you come up with your theme? Well, it really depends on what you want to say about the world or what you think your show is saying about the world. If you're having trouble identifying what the theme is, think about whatever the big problems are in your show and how those problems are resolved. For instance, if your show is about humanity fighting off an alien invasion, maybe your show is really about the idea that humanity needs to come together uh, to defeat our common problems before they destroy us. And, you know, that can be a metaphor for a lot of things. Or if your show is about, you know, an odd detective who uh, solves crimes through, you know, whatever his mannerism is that makes him odd, maybe what you're trying to say is that our differences don't make us weird, they're what make us valuable. But how do you take that from kind of an abstract idea and actually put it in your show? Well, this takes us back to our old friend, conflict. Basically, you take whatever the issue is and you turn it into an argument with two sides. And then you have uh, some characters in your show take one side of the argument and other characters take the other side of the argument. This is sometimes called philosophical conflict. It's a conflict between two sets of beliefs or two ways of living. An example of this is The Walking Dead, right? So we're in the zombie apocalypse, and the question comes up, how should we live now? How should humans act? And you can kind of look at this as a philosophical conflict of how do humans live in the face of disaster? On one side, you have people who are saying, we need to come together, we need to hold on to our morality, hold on to what keeps us human, or else we'll know we're no better than the zombies. And then on the other side, you have people who say, no, we need to give in to our base instincts, throw morality out the window, dog eat dog, do whatever it takes to survive. And that's the show. You have this conflict. So you have the two opposing sides of the conflict or the argument, and your theme is, you know, whichever side ends up winning. And you generally show that through what your protagonist does, and what the consequences are to them for their actions. When it comes to theme, the endings of the stories are really important. In TV, that can be the ending of an episode, the ending of a season, or the ending of a whole show. However it ends up in the end kind of determines the theme. For instance, let's say you have a show about revenge. If the character gets revenge and everything's great and they walk off into the sunset at the end, that's a very different theme than if the character uh, gets their revenge but loses themselves and destroys themselves in the process and is kind of ruined at the end. Those two shows are about the same thing, but you know, at the end they have very different themes. So if you're struggling with the theme in your show, think about the two sides of the argument and think about which side wins. Uh, it may be that right now you have the wrong side winning. You could be having the opposite theme of your intention. So it's something to look at. Finally, I want to briefly mention the fun. The fun is the thing about your show that people are going to be tuning into every week. Think about the shows you love. What is it about them that you love? Is it the tension, the, the drama, the violence, the messy relationship stuff, the witty one-liners, the, the betrayals, the twists and the turns? There's probably something about it that keeps you coming back every week. Your show needs to have something like that as well. So think about what is the fun in your show? What's the aspect of it that audiences are going to love and are going to want to come back for every week? One way to think about that is what would the trailer for your show be? What are the kind of things that would be highlighted in it as this is what the show is going to be? Whatever the fun is on your show, make sure that it's tied in to the central conflicts, to the kinds of stories that are going to be generated. Make sure that the stories that are going to be generated every episode give you more of the fun. Because if they don't, then your show is going to go off the rails. Okay, let's quickly recap. The most important thing is that your TV show needs to be capable of creating new stories on an ongoing basis. To do this, you need a chronic or unresolvable conflict at the heart of your show that is going to keep creating new problems for your characters to deal with. These problems should be about what the characters want. And if they succeed in getting what they want, there's a reward. If they fail to get what they want, there's a cost. And whatever they gain and lose is important. The endings of those stories determine your theme, which side of the argument won. And finally, make sure your idea is going to be creating conflicts that contain the fun of your show, whatever that is for your specific idea. 
Real quick, here are two things I recommend you do before you write a pilot, particularly if you're new to screenwriting. First, read a lot of pilot scripts, particularly for shows that you love or are similar to the show that you want to create. As you read these scripts, which you can find online sometimes by Googling, think about what the writer is trying to do in the pilot episode, what they're trying to do with the characters, with the story, with setting up the world, and then really analyze how they're doing it. It'll pay dividends when you work on your own show. Second, consider writing a spec script for an existing TV show. This is something that used to be more common in the past. People would write spec scripts of existing shows and that would be the sample they'd use to get jobs. It's not as common, but I think it's still a fantastic exercise to learn TV writing. What you do is, yeah, choose a show that you love and study it. Try to find scripts for it, watch it, analyze where the act breaks are, um, how the story moves, and then you come up with your own idea and create your own episode by writing it. It's a fantastic way to learn TV writing because you kind of inherently know the structure of this show if you watch it a lot and the voices for the characters. So it's an easier way to get into TV writing before you try to create something of your own. Before you go, check out the description below for some additional resources to help you develop your idea for a TV show. And come back next time to check out our lesson on creating compelling characters. Until then, be kind to yourself and happy writing.